We also have experts in new materials and fabrication methods developing plastics, metals, and composite materials. If we are serious about improving safety, bringing consumers more and better options, and ensuring manufacturing jobs with that Made in America label, then we must be leaders in the development and application of these materials. For example, new bridges and car bumpers could both benefit from taking into consideration new technologies. So I'm interested in hearing from our panelists in industry and academia about their experience approaching investors and clients about their products and services. At this time, we will recognize Dr. Gangaro for five minutes. Thanks again for being here. Do not rip and replace, but renovate with advanced composite materials. Thanks to Congressman McKinley, uh, we built a bridge in his backyard back in 1996. It is standing, functioning extremely well with a reinforcing bar in lieu of the steel bar. This is four times lighter, two times stronger, non-corrosive, non-conductive. Just to help, we have built over 100 new bridges, including laminated composite timber uh, uh, polymer uh, and glass or carbon composites. And also we did some of the uh, hybrid development implying the wrapping of concrete and timber with composites. And these approaches uh, do not call for any rip uh, of the existing uh, commodity products, but reinforce uh, uh, these products with uh, glass or carbon as a shell with conventional materials as a, a substrate or a core. We can remove this falling concrete and do a few other things and put a glass or a carbon fabric carpet on top of the existing concrete deck and fuse it with proper resin. Where is the savings? This can be done uh, uh, with about 50 to $60 a square foot of a deck while in fact a rip and a replace will cost you about $150 to $180 a square foot. I would like to talk about is the shale gas movement. West Virginia is the epicenter of gas deposits with these new composite materials uh, with nano coatings uh, made of graphene or whatever that are non-corrosive and non-conductive we can design pipelines with internal pressures of 3,000 to 5,000 PSI uh, uh, and be able to push more gas at a most economical price. Composites are stronger than other materials such as steel, concrete, and wood. They are also lighter, more energy efficient, and easier to transport assemble and install. They offer design flexibility and durability and most importantly are resistant to corrosion and structural degradation. Nearly every key development in our industry since its inception began in the United States. However, the committee should be aware that other countries have accelerated research and commercialization in an effort to gain market dominance. My company is one of many manufacturers of composite utility poles and cross arms that are easier to install and more durable against extreme weather, fire, and require less maintenance, and lastly, significantly longer. Composite poles are the best choice in environmentally sensitive areas because they will not leach toxic chemicals and are resistant to rot and pest. Standards are a crucial issue. The federal government has been instrumental in the development of standards for over other industries. Now is the time for federal agencies to work with us and our academic partners, like my fellow witness, Dr. Gangaro, to develop these standards that would allow us to meet the challenge of our future with innovative solutions. And uh, Mr. Wine, if I could ask you, you, you uh, mentioned something that caught my ear, that uh, you had a bridge deck that went in in 14 hours? Yes. Uh, and how, how, how much, how big was that deck, just out of curiosity? The actual bridge in Willing was 200 feet long and approximately 68 feet wide with the sidewalk. In 14 that, hours? That deck was installed in 14 hours. So knowing concrete would be probably a 30 to 40 day just on the deck itself to disrupt 
you know, the traffic and delays. Um, I was curious, you know, I live in Sacramento. We have two big rivers, and we're always talking about water infrastructure. So I was curious because some of what you're talking about might be very helpful for us if we're thinking about materials that would be stronger and be able to withstand more pressures and things like that. Are there um, available, when you build bridges, are you also thinking about dams and levees and things like that also? Yes. Uh, we have a great bit of funding from the Army Corps of Engineers, and we have recently, about uh, four years, three years ago, rehabilitated uh, a dam underwater without draining it out using the composite materials. Oh, that uh, sounds pretty good. 